So I'm going to type out how did you hear about us? And I'm going to do a different kind of field this time. So we've already done the form element, text, email. I don't want password yet. We did that. We did that. We're not going to do all these, just the most common one. And I'm going to do a select. So with the select field here, I'm going to click on the list values. Brings open a similar box, except it doesn't have anything inputted here for me. And maybe I'll type out newspaper. And I could put a value of newspaper. I'll add another one, maybe Facebook. Facebook. And I'll add another one. I'll type out web search, web search. And I'll just do one more. Friend, so a friend told me about it. They're probably interested in knowing this so they know where the best place is to advertise the Humane Society. So that's probably why this qual question is relevant to them. Friend. I'm going to say OK unless I want to change the order, which I would use the up and down arrows here. Now if I preview this one on the web, save. This time I get a drop down. So if you don't have much space and you'd rather use a drop down, that's the option you want as far as a, adding a form element. And hit the return key. This time I'll do a password. I don't know that it's relevant for this particular form, but I do want to show you how to do that. And by the way, notice that all my form elements are within this red rectangle, this outline. In order for the form to work, everything needs to be within it. It's continually growing as I'm going through all these. All right, we did form, text, and I'm going to do password. Now in this particular case, maybe your company actually has a policy that no passwords can be over 10 numbers and digits. In that particular case, you would want to give a maximum length of eight. Okay. Not sure I clicked on that right. Let me go back. Eight. I could give it a length if I wanted to as well. Maybe I want to max. Actually, I want to do. I did that wrong. I want opposite way. Forty. And the maximum length of eight. Eight characters. I'm going to go ahead and preview. Scrolling down, I'm going to hit my keyboard eight times, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm continually hitting it, but nothing is being inputted because I gave it a maximum length. And you get, you get dots as well for security purposes. All right, giving myself some more room. Again, we're not going to go over all of these because we're not going to make a very big website, but I'll go ahead and now, what would you want an image button for? Okay. Maybe you actually have, you want to put in an image. For instance, if you had a shopping cart and you wanted to give people images of small credit cards like MasterCard, Discover, and that sort of thing, you'd want to add an image. So I'm going to pass that by. Maybe I want to do a color. And this one's going to look a little bit different in all the browsers. I'm actually going to preview this one. If I click down here in Safari, I get a color chart pop-up. If I click on this in Safari, I get a pop-up here where I can choose the color. Again, this is going to look slightly different in different browsers. Clicking after that, Maybe I want to, maybe I own a company where I put, 
people's photos on mugs. And I want them to submit a photo. So I'm going to do file and that gives me a, a browse button. So I'll show you how that works. If I click here, it's going to open up my finder window. So we did form, text, email, password. If you want somebody to give their URL or web address, you could add that. I'm not going to do telephone number or search. The search is never going to work. Number, range, I'm going to skip those. Uh, you might want to add the month if you're a company that is sending out billing and people can s select the time that they want to pay something or if something gets shipped, you could add month and week information or the date or time. I'm going to skip those. They're not as common. But in order for this one to actually work, I do need to add a submit button. So I'm going to come down here and hit the submit button. I'm going to put my cursor in the right spot. Let me do that again. Submit button. And right next to it, I'm going to hit the space bar and I'm going to do a reset button. The submit element on the form will submit this form to the person that owns the website and the reset will reset everything in the field. I'll go ahead and preview that. And I'll just fill out some of this here. And the reset button will get rid of everything except the pre-checked element here. Again, I'll do it again a little bit and I'll hit submit. Now this is never going to work. We don't have a database, but you can set up the visuals or the front end. Okay, so I get this warning because it's not really going anywhere. Now, next thing, maybe I want to organize my content a little bit better. Maybe I'm going to grab these two questions. I am and I am interested in adopting A and uh, the cat and dog question, which I'll, I'll actually add that sentence again up here. I'm going to select these elements and then I'm going to do a field set and maybe I'll just put questions. Again, maybe you want to organize your form in areas. So if I preview that to see what it looks like, you want to separate your form elements, you could add a field set. Let me do that one more time. I'll select these elements here and I will do a field set and I'll just type out select and say OK. I'll preview that again. And there we go. I'm going to click on the red line now and bring open my property palette. You can make this semi work in Dreamweaver. If you type in the action area here, mail to with a colon and put a email address in here. And as far as the method, the most common one is post. Git would be, would be used if you have sort of a search engine. I'll do post. So let's see what happens when I preview. I'll just type something in here real quickly and I will submit. And it's trying to open up my Apple email, which I don't have set up, but it would open up an email application if you did have one set up. Again, we did the most common one, the most common ones here. You could definitely uh, try some of these other ones. This hidden one would be for back end information. Maybe your company wants to kind of put a hidden text field in here just for internal purposes only. You never intend for the user to actually see it. And if you just want to create a simple button and put an action on it later, if you work with a developer, maybe they could uh, code that up and everything that would be required for your next exercise. All right.